Hello and welcome to this week's Scanic Saturday. I'm going to be designing a doily in Scanning Cut Canvas and you can see here the finished result that we're going to make. Uh, and basically this is actually made from just one shape which is the circle. We've got two layers going on here, the main doily design and also its shadow. So we're going to, uh, I'm going to show you from scratch how to make both. So we're going to start by opening up a new um, canvas. Now I'm going to go into my basic shapes and choose the circle. I think that's where we start our design. I'm closing down the shapes window at the moment because I want to open up the properties window and I didn't want the screen to be too cluttered. So I've got my circle selected. I'm going to drop that down to about half an inch just by typing that in in the properties panel and then I'm going to move it onto the canvas and I'll probably zoom in as well so you can see what's going on. So there's our first circle. By clicking on the D key, I duplicate that and I'm going to drop the other one, the second one, down to 0 0.35 inches. Selecting both by clicking and dragging over the both shapes and then using my alignment tools to align it vertically and horizontally so that I've got both over the top of each other there. And then I'm going to subtract, and that's going to punch the top shape, the smaller circle, through the bigger shape, the larger circle. So if I just add some colour there, you can see what's happened. So I've got almost like a donut. By pressing the D key twice more, I've got two more um, duplications of that shape now. And I'm just going to loosely position them where I want them to be. Then I'm going to select the two bottom shapes and use my alignment tool to align those horizontally. And then press the G key to group them together. Select all the shapes, and then use my vertical alignment tool to make sure that, that individual one is at the top. Now what I can do is ungroup the bottom two by pressing the G key when they're selected. Select all of those shapes together, and then weld them. Now I've got the basic shape for the things. I'll just zoom in a little bit more so you can see clearly there. And that's fine, that's exactly what I wanted. I can obviously undo if I need to. I'm gonna bring in another circle now though because I want to add a little bit more detail at the top of the design and we're gonna make this 0 0.25 inches. This is gonna be moved to the top of that trio of circles. Going to duplicate it once more because I'll need another one uh, in a moment. Then I'm selecting the two main design shapes, making sure they're aligned vertically. Then I'm going to weld them. Now because the top shape was white, it's made the whole shape white, so I'm just going to re-add some colour in there. Now I think this little area here will cause me some issues later on when I'm doing the bigger design, so I'm going to drag that smaller circle over and I'm going to stretch it across. I'm going to deselect the aspect ratio so that the oval will be approximately a quarter of an inch by one and a quarter. Then again, aligning on the central axis or the vertical axis, I'm going to then weld them all together. Good, okay, that looks good. Now, I'm going to zoom out a bit now because I need to work at a bigger scale. I do need to bring in another circle, so I'm dragging that in from my basic shapes palette. And I'm going to make this exactly four inches in size. Now because I had the aspect ratio unlocked, I'll have to type in both dimensions. And I'll just turn that back on in case I need it again. Now what I'm doing is I'm just dragging the little circle pyramid I guess you could call it, roughly into the middle of that circle and attached to the edge. I'm going to press duplicate, D for duplicate, and then uh, move my cursor over the little green dot at the top, hold down the shift key and rotate, and you'll see that's rotated it by exactly 45 degree in in increments until it's got 280. Just moving it again a little bit down, 
and then I'm going to select all of the shapes so that I can again use my alignment tools and align it vertically. Now I click on the first shape and hold the shift key and click on the second rather than clicking and dragging because I just want the two smaller shapes selected. Press D to duplicate, hold down the shift key and rotate and then just nudge it to where I need it to be. Repeat that process two more times as you can see me doing here. And then a nice quick shortcut is select everything and then use my alignment tools again to make sure that everything's where I need it to be. Now I want to duplicate that outer ring. So again, I'm just clicking and then holding down the shift key as I click the other bits so that I only select the outer bit. G to group them and D to duplicate them. This time I need a specific angle. I need 22.5. That's halfway between zero and 45. Again, using my alignment tools to make sure they're all perfectly aligned. And now, as they are, I can use my weld function to weld them all together. Now that is our main design pretty much done. I'll just zoom in so you can have a closer look. And you can see what's going on on this screen. Perfect. Okay. So I think we're just about ready to go ahead and do the shadow layer. So I'm going to select the main design go into edit and choose my offset tool. Now the spacing between the edge of the shape and the edge of the shadow, I'm gonna reduce a bit. I'm gonna leave everything else set as it is and then click okay and it's now gonna create me that shadow layer. Now it always sticks it on top. So if I right click and choose center back, that's gonna move it backwards and also I'll give it a different color so we can see what's going on. Okay, so we've now got both parts of our doily design completed. If we are going to cut these though, what I would say is move them onto different areas of the mat because all you'll end up doing otherwise is cutting them into each other. Uh, just move them there. Don't forget to obviously give it a name before you save it. And then save it into your projects. And then obviously if you want to um, download it to cut on your scan and cut, just click on download and then choose the option uh, that's most appropriate to you. Whether you want to download it to your PC to get it onto a USB stick or whether you want to use the wireless transfer if you've got that option available to you. Now that's about it for this one. I hope you've enjoyed it and I, ho I hope you'll make use of it. Uh, please don't forget that there's many more videos on my YouTube channel and you can also find me in all of these other social media locations. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.